Hello, uh, this is a, a guide to setting up your brand new Windows 11 laptop. So here's a brand new Windows 11 laptop and I'm going to get it out of the box. Uh, I'm going to use a knife to cut the seal, as you can see in a second, because uh, that way I don't tear the box. I'll also only use two fingers to actually get the little tab out again, so I don't tear the box because if it breaks or I want to sell it, having the original box is well, the original box got the laptop to you in one piece. So it's the best thing to do if you're going to send it to someone else for whatever reason. So keep the box intact, open it carefully. Right, next stage, uh, now the box is open, is to pull out the little cardboard bit there with the power brick in. And it's quite a substantial power brick for this particular model, as we'll see. Uh, that's a bit of a whopper. And you get a mains lead as well, obviously, depending on what region you're in. So we'll get the main laptop out now. Because it's a little bit easier once the power brick thing has been removed. So uh, we just pull it out and it's in a bag and it's got some little cardboard bits around it. So we'll take all that off and um, we'll get it out of the bag and have it there. But let's see what's inside the box first. You used to get loads of stuff, but now you get like cut the bits of paper. Most of them are compliance certificates for like EM emissions and things like that from the laptop uh, battery and from the uh, Wi-Fi card that's in them. Uh, this particular one, we'll just see in a second, this particular computer is actually a Dell and it's the G15 and this model is the 5511, about a thousand pounds. They do Alienware as well, which is significantly more, but in terms of spec, this has got the same spec roughly as the Alienware ones for about 500 quid less. So that might be something to consider. Uh, right, we want to plug it in. Uh, I don't really want to film the <laughs> include the oh we'll take that off a bit, of, bit of foam stuff I don't really want to include the, the setting up of the power brick so, just to save a bit of time so there's the laptop there looking rather nice and we'll jump straight to the bit where it's all plugged in which is happening in now and right so mains is in the other lead is an HDMI lead which is going to uh, the ninja that I'm using to record it uh, previous video I used a GoPro and a duvet uh, now I've gone up the gear, <laughs> gone up the gear slightly. Uh, so we're going to power it up. Now, the thing about powering it up is, give the button a good press so you know you've pressed it, because sometimes it might not do anything. This Dell is actually quite fast, as you saw there, but some machines can take a little bit of time to get going. Uh, this bit in is actually in real time. I'm not going to speed this bit up. Um, that on the previous video, people found that helpful. What I'm doing now is I'm switching the output to a Ninja. So now we can record the screen directly and we get a much better quality uh, image. So this is all in real time, the just a moment thing. It doesn't actually take long on a modern one because of M.2s and we should see this. So the first thing you see is the region. So you choose the region that you're in. I'm in the United Kingdom, so I'm gonna choose the United Kingdom. You can choose obviously whichever one you, know, you happen to find yourself in. So once you've chosen the one you're in, you want to click next and that goes to the uh, key map because you might have a different keyboard layout. Uh, I'm in the United Kingdom, the laptop's United Kingdom key map, I'm choosing United Kingdom. I don't want to add a second one, so I'm going to put skip. Uh, now we get a bit of a problem. Uh, for Windows 11 Home, you cannot create a local user account. It will not let you. For Pro, you can. Uh, so Home will insist that you join the network and when you're on the network it insists that you have a, an account. Um, I don't like Microsoft accounts particularly, especially not when setting up. So here's a little trick. When you see this screen, what you need to do is press Shift and F10. Okay, so I'll say that again. Shift and F10 when you see this screen because that will launch a command prompt. So Shift, F10, and we get a command prompt. In the command prompt, type in task manager, or actually T-A-S-K, then M-G-R, and press return. And that will bring up task manager. Now, scroll down, because we're looking for a particular thing. So click on it and scroll down. <laughs> Ignore all the McAfee stuff. Quite a lot, isn't there? Uh, scroll down, and you're looking for network connection flow. Click on that, right click, and then end task. Notice the background has changed to the license agreement now. So when you've done that, you can now close Task Manager and you can close the command prompt and we've gone past that. 
we're bypassed to join the network thing read the uh, license agreement thoroughly and then um make notes no <laughs> just click accept <laughs> uh right so because we're using a local user account now what we can do is use any name we like so i'm going to use um, dell yeah uh, you can also set a password on the next screen um i don't bother with passwords i like it to boot straight to the desktop you can obviously add one the next thing is um the sort of privacy settings uh, i tend to click no to all of them um so click no to every single one of them you can obviously read through it and then decide whether you think in fact my device might be useful but it's up to you i, I tend to say no to all of them uh especially the advertising id one so uh yeah this bit here is dell uh, it looks like you've got to fill it in um except you don't and this bit here looks like you've got to fill it in and tick things and agree to things but you don't so i'm going to click next and not fill anything in uh right now this is the bit that chugs so what i'm going to do is i'm going to speed this little bit up um, and we'll move on reasonably quickly uh, it, depending on your machine it will take a bit of time it depends whether it's got a mechanical drive in or an ssd or a, you know the faster m.2 models but it can take quite a long time to do this initial setup so let's make it go a bit faster <laughs> um and we can get on with the next bit right so here's the desktop after all that chugging um what we want to do now is actually uh join the internet so click on um, the wi-fi that's yours and then add the password and join the internet and as soon as you do that windows update is going to go absolutely berserk if you join the internet while well, the setups yeah you know, the initial bit that we skipped using that little trick then it sort of it jumps on windows update anyway and the first bit of it can be a bit sluggish so um, i like to join the network after so so i know it's doing it mainly um because then i can expect it to go a bit funny rather than going oh my new laptop is a bit slow so connect to the internet and then we're running windows update the easiest way to do that is to right click on the start button and then choose settings and then if you notice at the bottom left column on the window that opens it says windows update so click on that um, and it will check for updates and this one i think has got quite a lot so you might find that your one depending on its manufacturer depending on what happened in between then and when you bought it you might find there's quite a lot of things that it wants to do let it do them all you might have to keep an eye on it in case it sort of goes to sleep or something like that but just let it do everything it wants to do and restart it and that kind of stuff and when it's done um we'll go on to the next step so this one's now up to date so we're going to do some tweaks so click file explorer to open file explorer at the bottom and then right click on this pc and select properties the actual but right click menu looks a bit different to windows 10 but don't worry um and when you click properties you need to choose advanced system settings and then under performance you click settings and then choose best performance and then everything will get unticked and then retick smooth edges of screen fonts and show thumbnails those are the ones you want to do now when you click apply nothing appears to have happened but actually the interface is now much more responsive um, that will become apparent when you start using it <laughs> but at the moment it doesn't look like anything's happened uh, the next thing is click ok and then um, on the bottom one there look click settings that started from recovery and then untick automatically restart and say no memory dump that means when it blue screens you get a chance to write it down before it re you know rather than the race to catch it before it restarts and the memory dump thing you can fill the hard drive up with little memory dump things so turning that off is it's quite a nice idea as well so we'll close all those windows and uh the next thing we'll look at is indexing so just shut everything and then click on the search um icon and bring up the search box and in there type indexing and you should see indexing options as the best match open that up and then you've got um the indexing options click modify click show all locations 
and untick everything you possibly can. Very simple. If you've got Outlook in there, if you're doing this as a tip for speeding up your Windows 11 computer generally, if you see Outlook in there, don't untick it because Outlook will have a massive hissy fit about that and get very cross. So leave Outlook ticked, but try and untick everything else. At this stage, there isn't a great deal you can tick. It's a brand new laptop. You probably won't be able to untick the start menu as well. So the thing is to try and untick everything as everything you possibly can apart from Outlook. And once that's done, uh, just click OK. And that's that. That's it. Everything else is now transparent. Then we're on to the next thing, which is to uninstall some things. Um, right, right click on the start button and choose apps and features. And I'm going to make this big so that we get a better view of it. Uh, basically, you're uninstalling anything that you don't think you're going to need or the general bloat stuff, which is handy in a Dell machine because there's quite a lot of bloat. This Alienware stuff you see, I'm going to leave that. Uh, if you can think of a reason why you should keep it, then put it in the comments because that will help people. I'm leaving it on because the person who this machine is uh, is for is a gamer, so I'm leaving it on. Uh, anything else involving Dell, you can get rid of it, with the exception of uh, anything involving power management. So if it says Dell power management, leave it. Everything else, Dell, uninstall. Now, I'm not going to sit through and <laughs> do it because there's quite a lot of Dell stuff. So we'll we'll speed all that up because there really there really is quite a lot of Dell stuff uh, and you can see I've, I've gone past it now and there's Dell power management services I'm, I'm leaving that so this is the last sort of bit of the Dell stuff uh, feedback hub I'm going to get rid of uh, I'm going to get rid of films and TV as well because I don't use it uh, I'm going to get rid of Groove Music because I don't use it uh, the Intel stuff I'm leaving the killer control center I'm leaving so if it looks like it's a driver or if it looks like it's related to hardware or you just don't know what it is then just leave it um because it's you know better safe than sorry uh, obviously the thing that's just coming to view now is the McAfee stuff um I'm going to speed that up just remove anything with McAfee on it there's quite a lot of McAfee stuff so it might take quite a while but once that's done uh, the next thing on this list here is uh, Office 365. Um, I'd remove the version that's pre-installed because um, it tends to be a bit of an advertising demo -y version that's designed to get people to sign up for Office. So if you've already got it, you're going to be putting it on using you know your, your Office account anyway. So get rid of the one that's pre-installed and then you're free to put your one on without it sort of cluttering up. Uh, I'm going to get rid of Microsoft News, get rid of that. Uh, I'm also going to get rid of OneNote. I'll speed that bit up because that takes a bit of time. When you put Office back on, obviously OneNote will get reinstalled. And with that gone, I can now um, take a few other things off. So I'm going to do the Microsoft Solitaire collection, <laughs> unless you play it, of course. It's actually quite good, but uh, I'm going to get rid of it on this machine. I'm going to get rid of Teams as well. When you reinstall Office, it'll put its another version of, of Teams on as well, probably. So you can get free to get rid of that. Um, uh, remember, if, if you don't use it, just just get rid of it. And if you're not sure what it is, leave it. Um, so let's scroll down a little bit more and see what else we've got lurking around. Um, I'm going to try to do get rid of that. Uh, and then here we go. So there's a My Dell. We'll get rid of that. Um, sneaky, because it's not under D, is it? It's under M. So we need to get rid of that. So click that and click on install. The beauty of the apps is that you can actually uninstall multiple apps at once. You haven't got to wait for them to finish like you have with a conventional installer. Uh, the GeForce Experience. I don't use the GeForce Experience, so I'm actually going to get rid of it. But if you use it, then you know, you're free to keep it. But um, I don't particularly, I've never used it, to be honest. I've always found it a bit, well, I just never used it. So that's why I don't use it. If you can think of a reason to use it, then stick it in the comments. That'd be quite helpful to people. Um, but don't, don't do what I do. Um, these are only suggestions. There might be a better way of doing it. And I'm completely open to that. So we'll whiz it along because it can take a while to uninstall. Uh, uh, once it's done that. We'll look at, um, well, there's Office. Now, that's the sort of thing that lists your recent documents. It's like a, a clubhouse for Office. I'm going to get rid of that. Um, then we're just sort of scrolling down slowly. Uh, oh, look, Dell. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Dell support assist, get rid of that. Don't you just don't need that at all. Um, tips, okay. If you need tips, use it. Otherwise, get rid of it. Weather, um, so I'll look out the window if I want to know what the weather is. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, web advisor, get rid of that as well. That embeds itself into your web browser and. Yeah, I'm um, gonna be careful what I say about that, but get rid of it. Um, once that's gone, we are um, kind of at the bottom of the list almost. There's a couple of Xbox things. Obviously, if you use them, keep them. If you don't, get rid of them. Some of them you can get rid of, some you can't. For example, Xbox you can, so you can install that if you don't use it. The game bar that won't uh, that won't uninstall but live will so you can get rid of that obviously if you use it keep it um and then there's your and, and that's kind of it so we've gone through the whole list and we've looked and we've removed stuff that we don't use and um yeah now it'll probably want us to restart so it would be a good idea to restart the computer at this point so that's what i'm going to do and then we'll resume and we'll do the next bit so for the taskbar um you still got the little system tray at the bottom with icons in it which looks familiar the main obvious thing that's different is that the icons are right in the middle of the screen that isn't too much of a problem as we'll see later on that's not an homage to apple that's because widescreen monitors work better with the thing over there so the actual system tray itself works in a very similar way um, except there are differences so right click and do taskbar settings and you'll notice there's this top bit there where it says taskbar items. There are certain standard ones that you can toggle off and on. So you can toggle search, task view, widgets, and chat. I don't use chat. I don't use task view. Widgets is a new thing that's been introduced um, in Windows 11. So it was, I think it originated in Windows Vista, did it? Uh, you can also right click on an icon and unpin like I did just then with the store. Obviously rewind that if you missed it. So you can toggle them there, or if they don't show up there, you right click and unpin. That kind of the same way it works. Uh, the, the real difference is the, the actual taskbar corner overflow, which is what they call it now. Those items are hidden in that little pop-up box thing, unless you toggle them. Now you can toggle them like that. So you turn them off and on and they sort of appear and disappear as you can see in the, on the screen. Or you can grab them and drop them out. So you pick it up and drop and it moves out. That's great. There isn't a setting that just says show them all though. That's a change from Windows 10, but you can sort of move them in and out of there as you wish. That's not good if a program starts that you don't know it's starting because it can be hidden. So that's a bit, might be a bit dodgy. So check that occasionally. And while I'm here, there's OneDrive there. So uh, if you don't use OneDrive, then what you can do is you can um, basically open it up and stop it starting with Windows. So open it up, help and settings, and then go to um, the first tab and untick start with windows and then click ok now if you want to close it you can right click and do the same thing again but this time close it but i'm just going to leave it this time so uh yeah so the, the taskbar is um slightly different to what it is on windows 10. um the main thing that's different is that sort of taskbar overflow area they're calling it now you can move things in and out you can toggle things so that they hide. Um, but if a program sneaks in, you might not know it's running. I tend to, on the previous video, I said, here's a setting that shows them all. And it was great because you could just see them all. So that makes it a little bit more complicated, a little bit more clunky, but, um, but it is what it is. So um, let's look at the elephant in the room, which is gonna be, <laughs> all the icons being in the middle which you might not necessarily be very pleased about so um, again right click taskbar settings so if you scroll down the bottom you've got taskbar behaviors and you can see it says taskbar alignment so you can do left or center so if you want it classic you can do that and if you want it in the middle you can put it back to center there's automatically hide the taskbar there as well that's there as well um, so yeah so that's essentially the taskbar um, and what we'll do now is we'll look at the next thing, which is um, defragmentation and the automatic settings for that. So in File Explorer, like I've done there, 
and then go to this PC and you'll see your drive, any drive will like. Right click, select properties, and then select the tools tab, and then do that one there, and then change status, and then turn it off. Click OK, click close, and then you're done. And that will turn off the automatic defragmentation. Uh, you don't need to do that um, on an SSD or an M.2. There is trimming, but again, it doesn't need to be done automatically. You can do it manually if you notice any performance glitches or anything like that. If you've got a mechanical drive, it's questionable as to whether actually defragmenting it will speed it up. It only really matters if the drive is heavily defragmented. So you can improve the life of your drive and reduce system background overheads by turning that off. Well, in Explorer, one thing I like to do is adjust the folder view on that left hand panel there. So if you right click on white area, you can do expand to current folder. And then if you right click again, you can do show all folders and that sort of expands that and makes it a little bit easier to navigate and find things. Entirely optional, <laughs> but um, I kind of quite like it because you can see how it, you know, it just makes I think I find it makes it easier to navigate. But obviously you're free to do whatever you want. Um, OK, on to the next bit. We'll look at power options now. Um, Windows settings for power are heavily geared towards laptops, which is handy because it's a laptop. So right click the start menu and you'll see power options. Uh, and we'll choose that and go straight there. And here we are. There's an interesting thing at the top about battery levels. That's new. So you can see what your battery levels are and there's a historical, um, sort of, well, <laughs> there's a whole historical history of it, uh, helpfully. Uh, but what we're really after is um, stopping the thing going to sleep. So on screen and sleep, um, when it's plugged in, what I tend to do is I tend to say, turn it off like never. And I also and notice that the um, device to sleep bit then immediately switches to never as well, which is handy because you used to have to do that manually previously. So now when it's plugged in, the screen doesn't go to sleep and it doesn't go to sleep at all. Power mode will just put best performance and that sets a lot of presets. Uh, it, again, it depends how you use it. Um, generally speaking, when it's plugged into the mains, you want the best performance and you're not really worried about battery life. So you don't want it to fall asleep and everything else. Uh, you can actually access the same thing by right clicking on the battery at the bottom and doing power and sleep and it takes you straight there as well. So that's kind of convenient. There's lots of different ways to get to this, um, but you know, once we're there and we've tweaked it, we never really go back again. Notice it's moaning about um, you know, the fact that we don't wait to go to sleep. Uh, if you the search box there, if you type in the lid, you should get change what closing the lid does. This is kind of interesting. This is how laptops get broken because they sort of move when you move it, you're afraid to close the lid. So set it, set them both to do nothing and then save the changes. Okay. I've also changed the bar button so it does shut down as well. So that way, when, when you moving rooms, it's okay for you to just shut the lid and then open it again without having to worry about the thing taking ages to go to sleep and then ages to wake up again. On modern machines, it's not too much of a problem, but nonetheless, it does still, you know, it's, it still takes time. So that's a nice little tip. Um, and that will also stop you damaging it because you're not sort of balancing it and holding it from an edge because you, you know, you can tuck it under your arm and that means you can open doors without dropping it or, or twisting it all. Yeah, so that's, that's a really good way of improving the life of your laptop by reducing the chances of you damaging it. Right, anyway, let's go and look at some other stuff. The next section will be about uh, sort of colors and things like that. So let's have a look. So right click on the desktop and select personalize and that will take us to the personalization bit. And there's loads of stuff in there. Loads and loads and loads. But click on background and then um, we'll have a little chat about that. So uh, I like a blank background on mine because if I'm staring at the background, why am I staring at the background? <laughs> There should be something in front of it that I'm actually you know, something productive. Um, for the sake of continuity, I'm going to leave this one on the default Dell one. Um, but I normally have a blank background. I think the icons show up a bit better as well. But you have whatever you like. You can have whatever photo you want. I'm not saying, you know, I'm being a bit facetious, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, so let's go back to the main personalization bit. 
but you know it's the menu there it's a personalization background person like it's breadcrumbs which is kind of helpful but it doesn't expand on the left hand column does it which would be useful anyway go into colors and there's transparency effects turn those off to get a little performance boost uh, choose your mode I change it to custom and I have uh, windows mode as dark because I just think the taskbar looks a bit nicer you can have whatever you want of course app mode I have as as light um, uh, you can, I use the default accent color, but you can obviously choose whichever one you want. Maybe the slightly less leery blue is probably nicer. Um, show accent color on, yeah, see, that's pretty horrible, isn't it? <laughs> so maybe the slightly less leery one. Show accent colors on files and Windows borders is an interesting one. They've changed that. If I fire up two file explorers, you can see that the active one gets a little, um, you can, well, you can't tell which one it is. But if I go back to personalization, and enable that uh, accent color like this. If I now switch between the two that are open, you can see one's got a slightly, they get that sort of slightly halo effect on it. But what's annoying is that if you open other kinds of programs, like for example, um, if we open Notepad, then the whole bar becomes the accent color, which makes it much easier to spot. Kind of annoying um because it's almost like they haven't finished um let me just let me just show you if i fire up notepad we can have a look and i'll um i'll show you what i mean so uh let's run it so you can see it's got a lovely blue bar at the top which is a bit old school but you can tell it's tell it's running but if i switch to file explorer you it's it's different isn't it it's got like a so it's not consistent it should be consistent is what i think um yeah, let me know what you think if you've got any thoughts on that. But below personalization is apps. So click that and what you find is uh, all sorts of stuff. But the one we're after is startup, which is right at the bottom. So um, give that a click. And this is where you can adjust the things that, that start up. It's not everything, um, but it's gives you a sort of safe way to control things and you can turn things off and on and see what happens but click gaming and then xbox game bar and then um turn that setting off if you're not using a controller so it's not you know looking out for it then if you go to accessibility uh you can adjust uh things like sticky keys and things like that so sticky keys is actually by default it's off but you want to turn off the keyboard shortcut for it so keyboard shortcut um, for sticky keys filter keys and toggle keys you can turn all those off and then you can you know, turn all the sounds off and everything else so that way if it's not looking out for you to press it um, this is this is this is like sprinkles on top of a massive cake so it's not going to make a massive difference to performance but it is just you know icing on the cake so the next thing we're going to look at is um, notifications and we're going to look at um, how you always show the scroll bars and why that's you know a setting that is annoying if you don't adjust it so right click on the date and time and select notification settings and you can see you can turn them off there i think if you expand it you can sort of do it in a bit more detail but for the purpose of this video just turn it off also below that you've got offer suggestions and get tips and tick those because uh, otherwise it gives you helpful tips and other nonsense uh, next thing we're going to look at is quite a common one that's that's um it's enabled by uh it's disabled for aesthetic reasons you can see there's a little um, scroll menu on the side there uh, and as I scroll up and down you can see it sort of appears but if you type in the word scroll into the search box you've got always show scroll bars at the bottom right so click on that and it will take you straight to the setting and then just make sure it's turned on so that when you're scrolling up yeah when you've got a window open and it needs a scroll the scroll bars are there so you don't move the mouse over pause while the while the bar appears and then scroll and it, it just means it just makes things more efficient we're almost at the end now so here's a one last thing if you uh, right click on the start button and then click um, disk management we can have a look at the c drive 
and um, see what's going on with that because it's kind of interesting so we'll just maximize that uh, there's about 20 gig on this particular model of laptop 20 gig that's being used for recovery partition so if you wanted an extra 20 gig of space you could just reinstall windows having spent, <laughs> having spent all this time configuring and removing stuff if you just reinstall windows 11 then you'd get an extra 20 gig of space you wouldn't get any of the bloat and um your laptop would probably work better so um i'm not saying do it because you might be watching this because you're a bit scared to do that um if you want i can do a video about how to install windows 11 on a blank machine and i, I can do all that if you want but i'm just saying that there's 20 gig of space that's being used up and that you buy a recovery partition that you will probably never use because if you need a recovery partition it's because something's broken but if the hard drive is the thing that's broken then the recovery partition isn't going to work anyway is it so it's sort of it's it's a bit of a can of work. it's a bit of a rabbit hole but i don't want to start crawling down because who knows where it goes um right so let's just <laughs> let, let's just do comments yeah I, I answer all the comments so feel free to you know so just say what you think let's do the last bit now anyway so to finish up i wanted to um uh, mentioned something that, that a lot of people found quite annoying and they picked up on it as being a criticism and that's how the the right click context menu appears to have changed well it doesn't appear to have changed it has changed so let's just take a look at that if I right click you can see there's the um, menu there I can do new text document easy enough so nothing's really changed there if I right click on that now then let's see what options we get and you see it's a lot smaller um, if I click show more options at the bottom, that's that's there's your Windows 10 one. There's your no, that's the one you're familiar with. So you've got all the things like cut copy, you've got you know, open with, you've got that is the thing that you're that you're, you know you're familiar with. So um let's go back to the, the new one, the new styly one, and we'll just um see what all the fuss is about because if i right click it there's a row of icons at the top delete share one of which is cut one of which is copy so instead of having to move the mouse all the way down to find copy i just move it very slightly and then open it again and paste so it's the yeah, i think it's better <laughs> because you don't have to you don't have to um move the mouse quite so far to get copy and paste and, and that kind of thing so yeah if you've got any thoughts on that that would be um you know stick them in the comments so uh yeah liking and subscribing is always appreciated if you um i'm not i don't get particularly rich from this for advertising revenue so if you think i deserve you know more than that then then just buy me a coffee or something that would be very helpful um and any questions you just stick them in the comments and and i'll answer them because i always answer the questions and i always respond to comments um and yeah as ever thanks for watching